extension methods provide you with a useful way to extend an existing type with instance methods that are declared outside the type itself. In this case I have a really simple car class with a single boolean is driving property and I want to extend the car class to have a method that makes the car drive. And I'm going to show you the syntax first and we need to declare extension methods in a static class. And I'll just call it car extensions. And then we need a static method and I'm going to make it a void called drive. And we need to only pass it one parameter in this case and that is the type that we will be operating on. And the syntax for an extension method is to proceed the type you will be operating on with the this modifier. Okay. So I want to add my instance method to the car class. And all I'm going to do is set car.isDriving equal to true. Okay, if I comment this class out first, you can see here, of course, I only have the isDriving property available when I pop up IntelliSense and then the base object methods. When I uncomment, you'll see that the drive method is now listed just as if it were an instance method. It has a little bit different icon and it is labeled an extension here, but nonetheless it acts like an instance method. I'm going to call car.drive and then I will write the value of is driving a couple times just to make sure it works. Whoops. Okay, so you can see false and true. Now, more important than the syntax, which was really easy to cover, is the when and the why would I want to use an extension method. Well, in this case, I wouldn't want to because I could easily put the drive method inside the car class itself. That's where it belongs. It's a behavior of the car. Now, if I were working with a car class from an external assembly that I didn't own and I didn't have the source code, it still might have been preferable to inherit from the car class and let my derived class implement the drive method. Now where extension methods do become extremely useful is when you're dealing with something like a sealed type or a class that cannot be inherited from. And one good example of that that I'll show you is the directory info class. I'll comment this out. And directory info, I need to import the system.io. Directory info exposes instance methods for creating, moving, and enumerating through directories and subdirectories. And you can see this class cannot be inherited. So this is basically just a class to represent a directory on your file system. Okay. And I'll just give it a dummy path here. One method that would be useful on the directory info class is a copy method to copy my directory to another location. But as you can see, that method does not exist in the base directory info class. Okay, so that's something I want to add in my application so that I can copy directories at any point in the code that I want. If I try to just derive from the class, You can see, like it set up here, uh, directory info cannot be inherited from. Okay, and that's the same error it's giving me right here. It cannot derive from a sealed type. So instead, my solution is going to be an extension method. So I'm going to make this a static class, directory info extensions, and I want a public static void copy to and let's use the syntax we used down here this directory info the type I'm operating on 
And I'm also going to pass just a string target path. Okay, that would be the eventual place where I want to copy the directory. And I'm not going to actually implement the method here, but you can see where this would be useful. And then I would just call my directory.copy to method. And it's only asking for the second parameter. And I could just call it like that anywhere I want it. A really common scenario for using extension methods is with the string class. A lot of people need to write custom string manipulation methods in their program. And one example of that would be a method to truncate a string which does not come with the string type. So I want to write that out now. A string extension class. And this time I'll return the truncated string. I want to pass this string the value that I'm truncating and the maximum length. And I'll go ahead and implement this if value.length is greater than max length. return value dot substring otherwise just return the value and let's write a quick little test up here Okay, so I expect this to just return A, and then I'll write a longer string that should return AF. Okay, so this type of extension method would be pretty useful if you are preparing strings for insertion to a database, and maybe your database columns are a fixed length, and you need to truncate the string upon insertion. So I hope this helps you understand the syntax, which is pretty easy for extension methods, and when and why you should use them.